From random ventures that were removed in the past, to popular attractions that were torn down for a new ride, Disney has always found a way to keep or reference things in some form or another. Now out of all the things left behind at Disneyland, one of the more arguably famous ones is a little ride called Mine Train to Nature's Wonderland. For those of you who don't know what Mine Train to Nature's Wonderland is, or just Nature's Wonderland for short, it was basically a ride that showcased naturistic things, like funny looking cacti, colorful erupting geysers, spinning rocks, and the glowing caves of rainbow caverns. Things you typically see in real nature. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm sure many of you are still wondering what the heck happened to this old ride, since obviously you can't ride it today at Disneyland. Well, I, I, I mean, you're not able to really ride anything at Disneyland at this point, but I, I just, just, just roll with it, roll with it, please. <laughs> but basically, it was torn down and replaced. But why? Well, Nature's Wonderland was designed to be a very slow-moving ride that took you around in nature. And in the 1970s, many of the people who visited Disneyland wanted something that was a tad bit more exciting than some funny looking cacti and, you know, glowing lights in the cave. So in 1977, Disney made the decision to tear down Nature's Wonderland and replace it with a ride you might have heard of called Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Now, if you really are interested in hearing more history on both Nature's Wonderland and Big Thunder Mountain, and trust me, there's so much more, I highly recommend you to check out my friend's channel, Alex's Historian. He goes into the history of both Nature's Wonderland and Big Thunder Mountain. Even if you're not a history buff, it's a really interesting watch. Back to the video, when Disney removed Nature's Wonderland, they tried to preserve as much as possible of the ride, going as far as to reuse many of the old props on Thunder Mountain and leaving many of the old scenes intact. So the real question is, how much longer until this video hits 10 minutes? And what parts of Nature's Wonderland is still standing even after 40 years of closure? For this, I think it's best to start off by looking at the most popular of all the abandoned places of Nature's Wonderland, which is this tunnel right here. This tunnel leads directly to Rivers of America and used to bridge the train across the pond into what used to be Bear Country. This tunnel is a pretty common sight since you really can't miss it if you're walking straight through Baked on the Trail, that's from Frontierland to Fantasyland. But there is one small thing that I'm sure not too many people know about, and that is Disney left a very small portion of the bridge standing after its removal in 1977. Now the bridge wasn't really anything too fancy, I mean, I, I wouldn't even go as far as to call it a bridge, it was more of a small platform with some little decorations like a mine car and a couple of crates on it. But it was still the original section of the bridge, which survived to see another day. Now, of course, it's gone, so uh, what happened to it? Now, out of the many people I've talked to, most of them believe that Disney removed the bridge sometime after the early 2000s due to structural problems, and I'm glad, and a little sad to say, that that's not exactly what happened. Disney did not intentionally decide to remove this bridge. I'm pretty sure they wanted to keep it around for as long as possible, but from what I know is that the bridge decided to kind of go out, you know, in style. You see, California is known for some pretty strong windstorms, and it's not all too common to see trees just being ripped out of the ground, falling on top of cars, and falling off of houses. Well, back in the early 2000s, one of these really strong storms hit Disneyland pretty hard, and brought down a couple of these trees. Now, one of these trees unfortunately broke and fell right on top of the bridge, completely obliterating it, almost as hard as Bob Iger obliterated Disney's bank account after buying. Now, if you're a little upset that you can't see this, you know, rotting piece of wood anymore, don't worry, don't worry at all, because there's still a lot more rotting wood around Frontierland, and there's still little remnants of the bridge laying around. Like for example, if you look very closely at the tunnel today, we can see pieces of wood and metal on the hillside and sticking out of the water. Do I know what these things are? Absolutely not. But you have to admit, it's still pretty cool to see something so tiny still lingering around after all those years. Speaking of lingering around, the jumping fish have stuck around in that pond for a good 33 years at this point. These guys have been a staple in Big Thunder Trail for years, constantly jumping and tricking people into believing they're real. But ever since the opening of Galaxy's Edge, the fish just kind of stopped. Now take in mind, Disney doesn't really run these fish on a daily basis, so maybe I was just unlucky, but personally, I haven't seen a single fish jump ever since Galaxy's Edge's opening. Now it's not all bad news for abandoned tunnels, because there is another original tunnel nearby, but if you're expecting a cool story like the bridge being destroyed by a tree, uh, you're not going to be too impressed, because this one isn't really impressive, it's just kind of there. Now this tunnel is just a few steps away from the first tunnel we were talking about, and also happens to be right across from Big Thunder Mountain. 
Back in the day, this was used as a mean of transportation from Bear Country into Rivers of America. After the ride closed, the tunnel was repainted to an orange color to better match Big Thunder Mountain and was sealed off with both rocks and wood. However, over the years, the wooden plank started to fall off and instead of repairing the damage, Disney instead installed speakers inside of the tunnel, giving it the illusion that there are animals living inside. And yeah, that's basically it. While the story isn't really the most interesting thing in the world, the fact still stands that this is the closest you can get to touching nature's wonderland at Disneyland. There is no other place in the entire park that lets you get this close to touching literal history, albeit majorly changed and partially destroyed. Moving on, let's look at the Rivers of America portion of nature's wonderland, probably one of the most changed areas of the ride we can still see today. When this ride was still open, this section was one of the major highlights of the ride, showing off both the massive Cascade Peak and the numerous waterfalls surrounding it. Now when this ride closed in 1977, this section looked pretty similar since nothing was really taken out. Uh, the mountain stayed relatively the same, and Disney even sneaked one of the original Nature's Wonderland vehicles into there, uh, albeit completely wrecked and in shatters. Uh, notice how there's no tender attached to the train. This is because the tenders were actually the engines of the train, while the rest of the, the, the thing was just there for show. As for the rest of the track, Disney added what looked to be a fake walk, uh, rock slide onto the track, and um, these little cute animals that poked their head out of the train. If I can find footage of it, I'll put it in. Now, over the years, Cascade Peak kept its waterfalls running. From what I understand, the peaks didn't get any major refurb since they were really, really, really far away from the main parks and Disney didn't really see a point to kind of refurb them. So over the years, the, the mountains started to receive a lot of water damage. And well, in 1998, the water damage finally took its toll and Disney decided that it was time to bulldoze the mountain. Now, I don't really know if that's the true reason for it being removed specifically. It, it just... It's just kind of an educated guess. But still, to this day, you can still see some remnants of Cascade Peak. Though it's been massively repainted and majorly transformed, you can still see a little part jagging out of the water, and that's basically about it. So what about the train then? Whatever happened to that? Well, the train actually stuck around for quite a while, even after the Cascade Peak removal, but after multiple years of no maintenance and just being hit by rain, sunlight, and wind, uh, the train just started to kind of fall apart. And then a little fight ensued that I don't really know too much about with what I heard. Uh, Walt's barn wanted to take the train and restore it, while Disney wanted to put the train into deep storage and let no one else see it. And there was a little fight between Disney and Walt's barn, and Walt's barn eventually won. And now they're actually restoring the train. I don't know when they'll be done, because the coronavirus thing is pushing it back quite a bit. But last I've heard of it, they started working on the paneling work of the train, which is pretty, pretty cool. So anyways, so far we've only looked at things from Nature's Wonderland that survived well after the closure of the ride. But what about the things that didn't survive? Now there were a lot of things lost over the years, but by far the biggest loss of old stuff from Nature's Wonderland was lost when Big Thunder Ranch was replaced by Galaxy's Edge. Now just in case if you didn't know, Big Thunder Ranch used to be a petting zoo combined with a really good barbecue restaurant which was built close to the final lift hill of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Along with the happiest turkey on earth having a semi-permanent home there, Big Thunder Ranch also had a few more secrets up its sleeve in that it was built right on top of the old desert area from Nature's Wonderland. While some things like the cacti and geysers didn't make it through the conversion from desert to barbecue restaurant, other things like bigger structures managed to stick around just for a tad bit longer. This included rock walls from the perimeter of the desert, a maintenance tunnel, and lastly, the only remaining arc from the ride. Unfortunately, all these things were lost when the ranch was destroyed to make way for Galaxy's Edge. However, apparently there were plans to save the Ark and reuse it in the new land. Just for clarification though, this stuff I'm about to say is things I've heard from people who know Imagineers, so just take it with a grain of salt. Basically, there were plans to move the Ark somewhere into Galaxy's Edge and repaint it to match the surroundings. However, since the Ark was built back in the 1960s, the structure would violate OSHA codes if it were to be moved. Keep in mind, the only reason why the Ark wasn't torn down beforehand was because it was grandfathered in. If it were to be moved, the structure would need to follow modern building codes, which it did not. Looking at this old construction picture, we can see that the Ark was one of the last structures to be removed from Big Thunder Trail, which could have been Disney's last ditch effort to find a way to save the Ark. 
As to where the Ark is today, there are three main possibilities. One, it could have been moved into Disney's archives. Two, it could have been reused in some way in the new land. Or three, it was just altogether scrapped. For all I know, I have no idea. Maybe someone upwards in management may know, but for me, a peasant YouTuber, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and congratulations, we're at the end of the video, yay! Thank you so much for watching everyone, I, I, I really hope you enjoyed it, I hope you just didn't skip the whole video, because this video took close to a month to make. I have no idea why it shouldn't take that long, but it took me a month to make this. Oh, by golly, I, 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 I don't know what's on top of me in making video, <laughs> taking so long to make videos. Now there are actually quite a few things I left out when I made this video from Nature's Wonderland. I really wanted to talk more, but at the same time, I didn't want to drag this video on for 30 minutes. Originally, this video was supposed to be 30 minutes long, hence why I made the 10 minute joke. But I realized that uh, it kind of dragged on a little bit too long. So I decided just to kind of start to cut it down a lot. And yeah, 10 minutes is the shortest I could I could have made it. I I'm sorry if it dragged on. I'm trying to get better at this. I'm trying to make videos faster too. And, uh, and yeah, thank, and once again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next video, which hopefully should be within the next year or so. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Christopher K, out of here.